Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. We're thrilled to have you here on our next session here using GA4 and BigQuery to upgrade your experimentation. And we're really excited to be joined by our partners, Google and AdSwerve. Uh, and you know, we'll jump right into that in a second. But first, I just wanna cover a couple of housekeeping items. First of all, um, there is a questions tab in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. So if you have any questions for us as we go, feel free to drop your questions in there. If we happen to not get to all of the questions by the end of the session, we'll follow up with you afterwards in email. So don't fret. Uh, there's also a chat button right next to that questions button in the lower right hand corner of your screen. If you have something that you want to add to the conversation or if you have any comments on the presentation, we encourage you to uh, converse with each other in the chat. So with that said, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. And uh, I will do that by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Mary Kate. I am the head of growth marketing for North America at AB Tasty. If you're not familiar with AB Tasty, we are an experience optimization platform that helps companies inch closer to the individual using experimentation, personalization, product recommendation, site search, anything to make the experience better for your end users. And I'll hand it over to Alex to introduce himself. Sure. Thanks, Mary Kate. Hi, I'm Alex Mullen. I'm the uh, senior manager at op of optimization at AdSwerve. Uh, if you don't know AdSwerve, we're a consultancy um, that's <laughs> kind of global as far as that goes. Uh, we specialize in media data and uh, tech, um, specifically in things like um, media buying and analytics, things like that, but also in uh, A-B testing and optimization. We're a certified uh, Google premium partner and um, here to kind of help with all your potential service needs. Cool. So I'm Tage. I've been at Google for about 12 years. I was originally on the ad side as a product manager and as a sales engineer. I'm now on the cloud side based in New York. Uh, I sit under our data and AI cloud for marketing. That means a lot, but um, really we focus on a lot of different components, but it's um, developing solutions so that your teams can scale and then work with great partners such as AB T Tasty and also AdSwerve um, to help with optimizations. Um, so thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you both so much for being here. We're uh, grateful to have such wonderful partners that are willing to share their expertise with us and with our audience. So just so everybody knows what we're getting into here, a quick look at the agenda. Um, we're going to talk about the three of us and why we're here together uh, of, of, all of all people and places. Um, and then we're going to talk, talk about GA4 uh, and why it's foundational and critical to CRO programs. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about BigQuery. Uh, I think a lot of people on this call might not have a lot of experience with BigQuery, so we're going to do a little learning. We're going to get curious here uh, and figure out what it can do for us in our experimentation programs. And, uh, and then we're going to look at next-gen capabilities uh, from Google Cloud and, and what we should be looking to do as marketers um, and, uh, and what's coming next for us in our digital experiences. So we're going to jump right in and talk about AB Tasty and Google and AdSwerve. And I want to kick it off with a question to you, Alex. Um, what, where do you see experimentation and data fitting together? And uh, what's, what's the joint value of, of pulling together you know, the data warehousing and the experimentation and, and having these good hypotheses? Yeah, so the way that I tend to look at it is that uh, with experimentation, um, it's kind of the activation portion of any sort of analysis that you're doing. You get all this data, you work with, you know, with partners, you, you, know, you um, implement a ton, of a ton of tracking and tagging and things like that, uh, generate a bunch of good reports and good insights. Question then becomes, well, now what? Um, so now you look into experimenting, you look into being able to test out some of the hypotheses that you're able to generate from the data that you get from things like GA4. But ultimately, further down the line, you want to be able to kind of see if what you did had the sort of impact that, or what you tested out had the sort of impact that you were really looking for. So that's where I think kind of where we all kind of sit within this sort of ecosystem. We wind up with gathering good data, being able to run good tests, having a platform like AB Tasty that's able to uh, provide that sort of, um, being able to provide those sorts of experiences and get stuff out there. Uh, but then on the other side, you also want to be able to verify uh, through disparate data sources, through things like Google BigQuery, uh, to see if what you did actually wound up impacting further down funnel the way that you were hoping. So uh, so ultimately, I feel like that's kind of where we all get connected in this sort of ecosystem. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, I, I think 
from my from my side uh, as a marketer uh, and in talking with our customers fairly frequently, um, speed is also really important. And and so I think having access to the data, um, it's not just like, oh, we have it and it lives somewhere, but having access to it and being able to leverage it um, and work with some sort of agility is really important. Um, campaigns change, things go viral on TikTok. You need to be able to adapt and really, um, you know, pivot with the market when when shifts are happening in a timely manner. And so having partners like Google where you have all your data in one place and having a platform like AB Tasty where you can get exper experiments set up and you can get personalization set up super quickly um, and have partners who are there to guide you along the way and make those recommendations and um, make sure that your tests are well designed is essential to being competitive in today's market. All right, so we're gonna move on and, and really start to dig into the Google here. So we're gonna talk about GA4 and uh, how it, we can use it more and leverage it better in CRO programs. Um, so we're actually gonna jump into some use cases here and talk about the process of building hypotheses and uh, how the, the, the role of data in building those hypotheses. We're gonna talk about using GA4 as a data source in BigQuery. Um, and then we're gonna go into some uh, experiment and personalization use cases. So Alex, I'll hand it over to you to kick things off here. Yeah, for sure. So as far as building a hypothesis, um, you can't have a good test without building a good hypothesis. It's essential for any test uh, and you can't determine the next best steps forward as far as what you should be testing on or what you should be testing, the sort of approach you should be taking without kind of seeing where you're starting from. So that's where getting good data out of GA4 comes into play. Um, for a hypothesis, uh, it's an assumption or an idea that's proposed for the sake of testing to determine if it might be true. Um, so in this case, an analytics tool like say a GA4, uh, they provide reports or they provide reports that act as a snapshot or a moment in time for how a page or a property or an audience performed at a given time. So it basically tells you, okay, well, this is how it's doing right now, or this is how it did in the past. And we want to try to make some sort of change in order to influence that. So in the example that I have um, that I have next uh, or that I have on the right side of the uh, the page here, um, in this case, I'm taking a look at, say, one of our prominent landing pages or one of AdSwerve's prominent landing pages, uh, taking a look at our services. We're trying to get people to convert on the get in touch uh, button at the top of the screen. Uh, in that case, I wanted to, I wound up digging into a GA4 in order to figure out how it's performing. Are, you know, are most of our users, are most of our users clicking that link? Are they performing? Any of that sort of stuff. I was able to generate a 1.5% uh, um, conversion rate based off of those clicks. Uh, according to GA4. And then from there, I was able to build a hypothesis. If we change the styling on the get in touch button, we'll increase conversion rate because the button will be more visible. So that gives me an idea in terms of what I'll wind up testing or what my my sort of uh, found, what it sets the uh, the stage for what my, uh, what the change is that I'm going to wind up making. Uh, GA4 is also really useful for building test plans. Um, it's essential, I find, uh, for kind of establishing that in guardrails. Uh, good data is necessary for figuring out important details around basically like uh, around a test, whether it's sample size or uh, calculating out a duration or how long a test should run. Um, while an experimenter can let a test run to accumulate data with the goal of eventually reaching statistical significance, it's not realistic for most businesses. Um, if you wind up, uh, you can have a test that goes on for years potentially before it ever reaches anything close to, close to statistical significance. Um, in some cases, for the sake of a lot of our clients, they want to be able to make decisions quickly. They want to be able to act on things very fast. Um, so as a result, you want to try to set up guardrails around things like what your ideal sample size or your ideal duration is going to be. Um, thankfully, you can use AB Tasties, uh, some of the tools that some of the tooling that they have uh, for things like sample and duration calculation to find out exactly how big of a sample you need and how long a test should be running. Uh, all you have to do is plug in the KPI performance in from your analytics platform. So like GA4, basically all you have to do is just look up your conversion rate, calculate that out, plug that into the calculators that you see here for your duration and your um, and your sample size calculator, and it'll help do the rest. It'll tell you exactly how many how many visitors you need to recognize a significant sample. It'll tell you the uh, the duration that you would likely need based off of your daily traffic, and uh, and then you can go from there. Uh, some tips around there. Uh, you want to focus most of your testing efforts around your most important KPIs. So essentially, what's what are the sorts of, of things down funnel that you want to influence? 
Are there any sort of additional signals that are further up funnel that you want that you think you can influence that you can build a test off of? Those are going to be the things that you want to focus on. You want to be able to build your uh, your sample sizes and your durations around. Um, that said, if you wind up with a, a really large duration or a really long duration and a really large sample size, there's a chance that your test might be underpowered. Uh, you may want to rethink about what you're testing and maybe consider taking a bigger swing as far as that goes. Um, so it really helps with uh, tools like this can really help with informing the uh, the sort of test plan and what the go forward strategy should be for, for your tests. And then finally, for this part, um, the big thing that uh, the GA4 is really useful for is going to be is going to be test reporting. Um, in this case, uh, you may want to consider using GA4 for test reporting in addition to what you have within a tool like AB Tasty. Uh, if your business uses GA4 as a, as a central source of truth, you do a lot of your analytics um, reporting, you do a lot of your um, performance evaluations based off of how GA4 is doing, <clears throat> you may want to leverage that for your testing to be able to tell whether or not a test is performant. Uh, if you're concerned about things like tracking alignment, multiple tools, and having multiple tools speak the same language, being able to kind of have them all unite under one platform like a GA4 is going to be really helpful. Uh, it's also really useful for things like segmentation. It's going to have options that may not be, that are going to be pretty much universally applicable uh, that, you know, may not be able to find in a, uh, in a testing platform. Uh, it's a good way to kind of augment what you already have or what you might be able to get within a, a testing platform. Uh, it provides options for additional types of reports. It's not just going to be like a flat table. You can also get things like uh, different types of visualizations, like funnel explorations, path explorations, segment uh, overlaps, cohort analyses, et cetera. And then the last and probably the most important piece for what we're talking about today, you can use it to connect the data that you have for, you know, for your tests through a, from AB Tasty through GA4 into BigQuery. So this way you can join your test data with other data sources. Yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about this segmentation and uh, the uh, aggregated data piece because for testing to get really good and to really start getting into personalization, you have to have good data segments. You have to have good audience segments. And to your point, while our platform does have some really great algorithm-driven segmentation functionality, it we can't pull in from your point of sale or... Um, from what's going on in your email or uh, uh, your social uh, audiences. So when you have the ability to see all of those in one place and pull segments from there, it allows you to get to tests that are a little bit more sophisticated and a little more targeted and a little more personal. You know, when you talk about trying to get closer to that one-to-one -one experience, having better segmentation is going to get you a big step of the way there. So here is a, a, a customer use case from April where um, after a certain number of pages were viewed uh, on certain funnels, so in this case, their health and mortgage insurance funnels, but they threw up a pop-up to try to improve their lead capture on their site. So the issue, of course, is that you, you want to develop a pop-in, you want to connect it to their API so that they can get calls back as soon as they put uh, enter the form in. Uh, and so there's a little bit of development work and there's also um, these specific funnels that they want the pop-in to show for. So not necessarily across the whole site. So we're getting into personalization here because we're talking about those specific funnels. Um, so this ran across all devices and with this specific segmentation of three pages viewed on this group of specific page pages, um, which was targeted through their data layer. So the click rate on that callback CTA to get a call from somebody on the team was 2.7, an increase of 2.71%. So they're getting more people to call by the use of this pop-up, which they're pulling in through their Google tools. So here is a second case study from a customer, Valmont. And uh, this is a French company, so apologies for the French on the screenshots. Um, so Valmont redid their website, and this is, if you've done it before, you know, we just did it. It's very risky. Uh, so you want to make sure that you test certain aspects of that relaunch before you do the whole thing, just so that you can kind of set your own expectations 
um, and start, you know, testing the waters with your audience. So they revamped their website and created a quick access to the top categories on the home page. So things that people are mostly looking for, they move those up to have a, a quicker access than to other categories. Um, and they, of course, ran this A-B test on the old website to see how it would work before moving over to this revamp. Um, but it was still lacking visibility. So even though it was working uh, and customers liked it, they, it wasn't driving as many clicks as they wanted it to. So they moved these categories just under the main banner, gave them much more visibility. I think, you know, obviously if it's above the fold, people are gonna see it a lot easier than having to scroll. So the results here are that uh, the click rate did increase. Uh, there was a 7% increase on these top categories and the transaction rate improved by 16%. Uh, and of course, uh, this was hard coded onto the website afterwards because it was such a successful test uh, and able to see the impact on revenue there as well through uh, data in GA4. So now we're getting into the section where we're gonna talk a little bit more about BigQuery. And uh, as I mentioned, we're gonna dive into this subject with open minds and, and we're gonna get curious and uh, learn about how we can be using BigQuery and GA4 better with our experimentation programs. So I'm gonna hand it over to you, Tej, and talk uh, talk us through a little bit more about Google Cloud and some of the offerings there. Yeah, thank you. So I'm gonna take a step back and kind of ground us in terms of how does this all come together and then go into depth in terms of what you see on the slide. So a lot of what Mary had mentioned and Alex had mentioned, um, this is data consolidation. This is essentially leveraging your data um, in a cloud warehouse, uh, which is what we call BigQuery. So this um, essentially allows you to scale quicker with the tools and the services that, you know, with the good partners that we have on a call today. So um, just with that in mind, essentially think of all the disparate Alex had mentioned before, there's a lot of different um, access to data. We're focused on GA. But essentially think of um, BigQuery as your filing cabinet where you want all of that organized data so that you can make um, decisions a lot more accurately, leveraging you know, AB Tasty and also AdSwerve in this process. But BigQuery as a, or GCP or Google Cloud Platform as a platform, think of this as hardware to software, we support all of that, right? And then you, we also support all different types of personas. Um, we work, um, you know, AB ta uh, Tasty, leverages cloud services to essentially create optimization tools and AdSwerve is super technical and works within um, our cloud products. So when you look at this, this is data consolidation. So on the left, you see data and AI as a lake house. There's a lot of superfluous um, kind of vocabulary about um, what is out there today. Just think of a data warehouse as your filing cabinet. But what I had mentioned before is kind of the, the hardware to software. We also work really and we deploy um, platforms for AI, machine learning, which enables a lot of the optimization components. Um, but again, hardware to software, that is what Google Cloud Platform is and support the, the great partners on the call. Next slide, please. And um, one thing that I think um, we forget um, as, as Google is like the benefit of um, our own data warehouse. So if you see here, we have all of these off the shelf models. At the top, you have all of the AI models. So we have obviously Gemini, multimodal, across all different types of foundational models for um, solving specific use cases. Inside of BigQuery, once you've consolidated all of your data or data components, you have all of these task related models. Um, I saw a lot of French. If you were struggling with some sort of translation for French, we could automate the process of an output. So think of this as optimizing one language to another really seamlessly with um, obviously the, the, the folks on the call, we could translate across a series of different um, localization applications or websites. So again, that's all centralized on BigQuery. And then uh, moving into kind of domain specific, um, you know, if you have specific use cases, leverage those models off the shelf within BigQuery. I know AdSwerve does a lot of this. Um, and then we're uh, we're open, you know, if you have your own custom types of models to solve uh, your own types of use cases, we play well with all of the um, open um, large language models and uh, machine learning models. Um, but again, I won't go too technical. I, I usually, uh, we wanna obfuscate the tech and really talk about how do we 
solve really pointed use cases such as this one here. So next slide, please. So I, a lot of times, um, this is what we talk about. Hey, I have a lot of disparate data um, access to data. So what are the platforms that you're leveraging today? I think Mary had mentioned at the beginning, you have social, you have email, you have all of these different platforms. What we want to leverage and we don't talk enough about is that they're at mo for the most part, it's clicks of buttons to consolidate that data. Again, that's, that's BigQuery. So if you look at this here from a sales and marketing perspective, there's a lot of different data transfer types of um, consolidation uh, levers that you can pull. So across your Google ads, your um, Salesforce, your additional um, ads platforms, this is just data consolidation. But we're giving, you know, a, essentially, this is all open source, but we've packaged and essentially given to um, folks to essentially say, hey, let's um, integrate for sales and marketing uh, across those different data sources. Uh, what are those ways to gain just analytics and insights from the data that we do have? And then what, what can we leverage from a data um, foundation so that we can drive better de decisions. And then, so just think about this as um, just overall efficiencies and accurate data versus more data. So um, these are clicks of buttons um, to access and consolidate data. Um, another kind of example, obfuscate the tech. Like, um, we also want to highlight the native integrations that we have across um, Google Analytics, uh, Google Cloud Platform, mainly uh, BigQuery our data warehouse, and then back into our ads platforms. But then you have, you know, AB Tasty and ads where they can come in and it help optimize kind of activating those, um, those uh, GA, that, the, the GA4 or Google Analytics data. We wanna highlight those native integrations across Google Analytics, BigQuery, and um, our ads products. But then you, you know, wanna leverage the, um, the, the services and the platforms that we have on the call today. So you can optimize and and activate quicker. Thanks for walking us through that. Uh, and now we're gonna get to I, what I think is the really exciting part where we're talking about what's next. So when we're thinking about next gen optimization and how we can be leveraging services and leveraging um, these data tools that you know were not around uh, 10 years ago, where do we think that we're moving next? And what, sh what should we be doing now to prepare for that or to get off on the right foot? So um, first, let's talk about data strategies. And I'm going to open it up again here. And uh, whoever wants the mic, uh, the, the metaphorical microphone, can uh, talk to us about data strategies and the importance there of data. Yeah, so I'll kick it off. Um, again, just thinking about um, scale and access to different disparate data silos. So Google Analytics being one of them, um, really the optimization and the output of any sort of um, measurement exercise, you really have to have a good understanding of the data that you have access to. More data doesn't necessarily mean better out outcomes. So having really defined um, kind of like an understanding of your data real estate enables those measurements and outputs to be more seamless and more effective. So just being on the cloud side and seeing, you know, there's a lot of different ways to access data. Um, just that really good understanding of your data develops better strategies. And one thing that I, I just want to make sure that we touch on, um, there's a lot of marketers on this on the presentation today. And so when they think about accessing tools and accessing BigQuery, um, which requires some knowledge of SQL, how can how can they think about extracting value from a platform like that? Yeah, extracting well, from a marketer's perspective, there really isn't um, like a specific need to access BigQuery, right? Like if you you don't have technical capabilities, what you have are the partners on the call today that can help you leverage just um, less uh, technical platforms so that you can scale quicker. But you feel more confident if you know that data is consolidated on BigQuery because then you're not chasing people down in terms of, hey, I need access to this data to run you know, this type of um, optimization um, strategy. But just really feeling confident that it's secure, it's consolidated, and your teams can move a lot faster. So while we have a lot of like, you know, the capabilities to go in and do deep um, data engineering or data science, 
from a marketer's perspective, just ensuring that you can move fast is what is kind of like the, the peace of mind that BigQuery gives. Now, we can definitely go into, you know, an hour long discussion of all of the, you know, more technical components, but from a marketer's perspective, it's just um, ease of use. Human capital is the most, um, you know, the biggest investment that goes into a lot of this. So how do we move faster and enable folks to be more creative? And that's where BigQuery and our AI platforms come in. But um, probably a different different discussion. Yeah, yeah, but clear, um, I, you know, and, and the understanding that everybody's working off of the same data um, in real time is, yep. is, is part of that security. Yep. Um, and confidence. So we'll move on to data verification and talking about, uh, you know, again, importance of data here, but you know, expand on that a little bit. Yeah, so for verification, a lot of this is more tied to the sort of efforts that you're doing within an optimization program or the context of an optimization program or an experimentation program. Um, you know, at any given point, you probably only have so much so much visibility into how your test is performing or how your experience is performing at this at this point uh, as far as what's next the sort of um, you know connections that we're talking about here enables us to get more of a comprehensive view of what a customer or what a potential user is seeing or doing uh, when they're on one of your properties so you're able to basically tell if it's uh, if you're having the sort of desired impact that you want when you're making these sorts of changes when you're personalizing something for example um, is that having the sort of impact that you wanted further down funnel beyond what you already or beyond the uh, the data that you have access to? If you're able to hook, if you're able to uh, to connect a lot of these sorts of things together, um, you know, through a tool like a BigQuery or something along those lines, it can give a more comprehensive look of what that what that uh, that user experience is going to wind up being, and then you can kind of optimize from it from there. So uh, it basically makes it so that you're not just limited to you know what you can what, what you can touch on a website it's also uh, what comes after so yeah um and so looking forward a little bit in terms of of what's next um sometimes i feel like the conversation outpaces what is actually done to a certain extent and mm -hmm. so you know we've talked the past many years i i think about things like omni channel and about um, having consolidated data, but in some, in many ways, people are kind of just getting to that uh, because you know it it takes a long time to orchestrate to get uh, to get the right infrastructure set up to um, get you know to your point, Tej, about human capital to get people in place and trained up on using some of these tools and, and just working across different teams. It takes time. And so in that sense, we're talking about things before people are actually doing them or doing them well. And, and I think we are maybe, you know, when I started at AB Tasty four years ago, a big hot topic was omni-channel. But I actually think we're now getting to a point where that people are getting to a place where they're doing omni-channel and they're getting good at it. And it's because of these data tools where people have the foundations, they've got everything coming in from their point of sale, from their social, they're able to see um, these customer profiles where they can say, hey, this person saw this ad creative uh, and clicked on it. I wanna make sure that they have this experience on the website so that it is consistent. Um, and, and you know, we were because we were having those conversations about you know, four or five years ago, it's just now coming to fruition. And so I feel similarly where everybody's talking about AI and machine learning and where we're talking about all these cool things that people can do with it, but we're still, you know, maybe four or five years away from people actually getting good with it. And so when we think about uh, using tools and using AI and, and really like using them to the, like, to, give value to our customers and to build these better experiences, I think it, not to bring it back full circle, but I will, it comes back to the data that we have and understanding what's available to us, to your point about, you know, knowing the data real estate and um, figuring out what's the right way that I should be using AI and not just like, what is this latest tool? Like, oh, it can make creative for me. Great. Like, but is that, is that the most valuable use for us and for our customers? Um, and so I think having those conversations internally and, and talking with partners and understanding where's where can I be using that is really the like the first step that people should be taking. But curious to know any anybody else's thoughts there. 
Yeah. So, um, Alex, sorry, I'll go um, first really quick. So, you know, like to go back, Mary, what you were saying is essentially before everybody had a problem. So there were a bunch of point solutions. So there was data that was, again, going back to sitting in separate silos. Um, the omni-channel, you know, like you have somebody from Google, um, a lot of times folks are saying, well, Google is just, you know, focused on the Google products. That's not true, right? And I think what you're talking about omni-channel, that's where, you know, GCP does come into play here because you had it, it, historically transaction platforms, you know, paid media, social channels, all of those were living somewhere. So now, as you mentioned, we're really getting into, okay, it makes more sense to have it consolidated so teams can move faster. And you bring up the the most powerful component to this is that everything was moving so fast before, and it's still mo and it's moving even even faster now. And the idea going back to data strategy and really understanding your data real estate, it's all going to be foundational. It's all going to be grounded on your data, and that needs to be consolidated. Otherwise, all of the um, AI components are not going to be effective. Um, you know, like what I keep hearing at all the you know kind of like events I go to or people really excited about AI. If you don't have a data strategy, you won't have an AI strategy. I've stolen that from someone. Um, I'll give credit when I remember, but um, at the end of the day, it really is like different solutions solve different problems, but then you cause bigger problems. Now bringing all of that together, again, you know, point of sale, transaction, measurement, data collection, like all of that should be, um, consolidated, especially for optimization, but even more so from like AI. So, so uh, that brings us to the end of the session. And I just want to thank our, our speakers here. Thank you both for joining us and thank all of you for taking time out of your day to watch this presentation. Um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us um, and we can, we can put you in touch with anybody on the call today uh, and happy to talk to you more about solutions and uh, Google Cloud and anything related to experience optimization. So uh, thank you all again, and we'll see you next time.